Right, girls and guys, this is a quick Webflow tutorial showing you how to properly set up the structure within your Webflow project. Um, there is a right way and wrong way of doing things, and this is an amalgamation of all the best practices I've learned, along with a structure system from FinSuite, which I will put below. But generally, every single page that you create within Webflow should follow this site structure. It's going to ensure that you can easily edit everything in the future. It's going to ensure that other developers can easily um, edit your site as well. So if you're going to start an agency, it's going to be great using this um, exact structure so that everybody knows and is on the same page. And also, it's utilizing the best practices, so you are going to get scored very highly within Google, and it's going to be optimal for search engine optimization if you so choose to go down that route as well. Right, so if we look at my Webflow project, I'm just going to move my ugly mug out of the way to the right-hand side, and what you'll see here is a very ugly website that I've quickly built, very stock, very standard. But what we are interested in is the navigator panel up in the top left. First of all, I'm going to show you how this is set up. And then we're going to go into another page and build this from scratch, just so you know exactly what we're doing. So within the body, and we are not applying any styles to the body. Um, this is a very beginner course, so we're just gonna keep things simple. Just leave that as a HTML tag. Um, you don't wanna be affecting the body. It should stay consistent throughout. If you don't know what a HTML tag, we'll explain that in the future. Next, we have the page wrap. What this is going to do is ensure that you can quickly and easily copy and paste your entire page to other pages. Now, Webflow doesn't have a way of you selecting multiple components, multiple divs. So this ensures that you can quickly command copy and paste it into another page, which is great. Also, the second use for this is um, setting it to overflow hidden, which you can see here. What that's going to ensure is if you have any overlapping elements um, that doesn't make your website scroll horizontally, you can easily fix that just by doing that. Be careful using that as it will stop any sticky elements from scrolling through the page. Again, don't worry, that might be an advanced feature that you don't want to know about. Next, within the page wrapper, we have the navigation. Now, the navigation, you can set this up anyway, but we are using the same structure throughout. But basically, what we want to look um, at is this next important one. It's the main wrap. Now, the main wrap is going to tell the uh, whoever's crawling your website that this is the main content of your site. The reason we leave the navigation out of this is because Navigator um, has a set, which you'll see here, tag of, um, sorry, we've got the main set. We've uh, the, nav the navigation has a tag of nav, the main has a tag of main, and then the footer has the tag of footer. This just ensures that, obviously, like I said, it scrolls through all the, um, the three core areas of your website and knows where to look. So the main is where the bulk of your content is going to go. And this is where we're going to put the section blocks. Now, as you can see, we've got section dash hero, section dash about. If you were to use the basic Webflow section, it would look like this. We're not going to be using that because we want to be able to um, fully customize every asset that we ever have. So we're going to name this section dash hero, and this is going to ensure that we can also easily uh, know what this section is about. So make sure that you're naming things. Right. The next thing you need to know is the absolute hero section. You're going to set that as the header which you can see in the top tag here. And then every section that is below that is just going to have a tag of section. Again, this is uh, for SEO capabilities and ensuring that your uh, website is using the best practices. Let's get rid of the Webflow section because we're pros and we don't use them uh, things. Right, now, the next important site structure is the padding and you're going to see dash size. Now, size... Now, let me first tell you what the padding is. The padding is the left and right uh, space between your content and the edge of the screen. This is going to ensure that nothing is touching the edge and you've always got a lovely border that is consistent throughout your website. 
as you can see on here, I've got this set to 40 pixels on either side. And when you get down to mobile, you can edit this, change it to 2020 or whatever you want. So ensure that you've got your padding size. The next thing that you're going to, again, these have no other stylings, but when we create this from scratch, you're going to see. Now within the padding size, we have a container size. Now, what I'm going to explain with the use of the name size is that sometimes you want to be able to have multiple sized paddings, multiple sized uh, uh, containers. So maybe you just keep this as medium and you keep this as medium as well. And then if you ever want to have a, a new container section that is slightly smaller, then you can set that to small. But what a container is, is if we go to a larger viewport, it's going to ensure that your uh, content never leaves whatever max width you set it to. So you can see here, I've set it to 1200 pixels, you can set this to whatever you want. Again, with the container block, if we're making this from scratch, you would want to ensure that the margins have a, uh, are set to auto. This ensures that, which I'll show you here, that the content is always centered in the center of the screen. And again, you wanna set the width to 100%, so it's filling that um, parent element. And then the important part is obviously setting your max width. So you will see here, if I set the max width to 1400, it's gonna lock out at that um, max width at a larger stage. Okay, cool, that's container uh, done. Again, what I'll show you is the, Webflow container, it looks like that. We don't use uh, Webflow containers, okay? So get rid of that. Next is uh, what you're gonna put all of your content in. This is the last structure piece of your element and this is gonna be whatever the name of the section is. So of course we've got section hero, this is gonna be hero and then we we'll put dash wrap. Now all of your elements, the images, the text is gonna go inside of here, but pretty much this is the last um, structure element and you can set Obviously the layout, we can have it flex, we can have it grid, we can have um, the top and bottom uh, padding for this section. So that is the basic setup. Now, if we go on to a new page, which I'm just gonna do here, let's call this structure. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can set this up in your own site very easily. Now, if you, everything we're using are div blocks, which you can find underneath the element panel and you'll see it underneath basic and div. But again, we're pros, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna speed up the process by on a Mac uh, selecting command E. That's gonna bring up this little search panel. And if you type in div, there you go. You've got the div block right there. Now don't select it, press enter because time is money. And now you've got your div block within the body. Right, we're gonna call this page. Now, this has no stylings, leave it as is. This is, like I said, for the future, if you wanna be able to copy your page or be able to set to overflow hidden, but just leave it as is if you don't have any stylings. Now, again, we're gonna add it in another div, the same way I showed you, Command E, type in div and enter. And then this one we are going to call main. Now for this, what we wanna do is go up to the settings panel and you'll see here in tag, we have this drop down list. Now these are all of the uh, uh, the language that the crawler is gonna use to look at the structure of your site. So for main, we're obviously gonna uh, select main. And you can see down here, it says specifies the main content of a document. There you go, boom, you've got your main. Now within this, we are going to put another div. And here is now where we're gonna put a section. So. We're gonna call this section dash. Now, what we wanna call after the dash is whatever the section is about, and we're gonna use that name for all the elements within it. So for example, this is going to be the, uh, the we've already got hero on the other page, so let's call this home, home hero. Well, let's call this hero two, hero two. Now, as this is a section, we're gonna to have to go into the element settings and then set this to uh, section. But because uh, this is the uh, absolute top section of the main, we're gonna set this to header. So leave header in there. And then for example, if you had a section underneath that, 
we would set that to uh, section instead. So only the first section of the main block is set to header, if that makes sense. Now, within the section, we're going to put another div. And if you've guessed it by now, this is going to be padding. And again, if you're only going to use one padding, just leave that as padding. But if you think you're going to use multiple paddings, uh, type in uh, your basic one as medium, and then you can make small or large. But for this, I'm just going to put in padding because we're not using that anywhere else. Now, on desktop, I want the padding to be 40 pixels on either side. And then on... I don't change the size on tablet. I just go straight to uh, mobile landscape and I'll change this to 20 pixels. And then that's going to change for the mobile portrait as well. There you go. You've got your padding. Now inside of this, we're going to add another div and we're going to call this container. Now this is probably the most complicated one to set up, but it's okay. Follow me through. Now, again, if you're going to use one container size, just leave it as container. But if you're going to use multiple you can have small medium and large or as many as you need so there we go container now the important thing remember to do here is on the margin we want to set that to auto on either side that's going to ensure that the container is always sent up within the screen and then we're going to set the width to 100 percent, so it's always filling 100 percent of uh, that screen and then the max width we want to set as whatever the design is that you're designing from if you're in figma you'll be able to find it out but I like to choose a container size of 1200 pixels. Now we can check this on the larger viewport size and you can see this blue line is centered and it's maxing out at 1200. There we go, we've got a container, wicked. Now inside of that, we are going to put uh, element wrapper. So another div, and this is what all of the content for section is gonna be in. And we're gonna call this hero two wrap. Obviously, what a wrap means is it's wrapping all of the elements together. So that's just a VEM naming convention. And then inside of this, we're going to give a height of 50 pixels and 50 pixels. And this is where you can start adding your content. So Command E, and we're going to type in heading. There you go, your H1. And I'm going to call this here. No, let's just call this structure. There you go. Now you've got all of your settings behind it. You can apply your custom style to your uh, actual section wrapper so we can center this. And now watch, this is the beautiful thing about once you've got this uh, structure set up. Now we can duplicate this. Make sure that you're duplicating the selector name and we're going to call this uh, section, uh, I don't know, underneath your home hero, you might be have a contact block so we'll call that section contact and remember now we're going to set this to section now everything below this you can copy and paste so we're not changing the padding again we're not changing the container now we're going to copy uh, duplicate the wrap so we're going to call this contact wrap and let's say we want that left aligned there we go now we've got two sections set up and look, we can just keep on duplicating this and we can change the name to this. Maybe you add a, a projects section. I know you can obviously set background colors to these sections. And there you go. Make sure that the wraps uh, are changed. So look, we've got a projects wrap. Let's duplicate that. projects wrap and we want this centered and we want this with 100 pixels height 100 pixels so there you go there is the structure that you should be setting out uh very simple one last thing is obviously you would put your nav bar above this and you would create a footer section using the same structure Put your footer section here so duplicate that and we're going to call this uh instead of section we're just going to call this flat out footer i've already got one on the other page we're going to call this footer two and for this ensure that you're changing the tag to footer this just know it makes the crawler know to skip all the way down to your the footer and it's going to basically look at the links and it's going to make indexing of your site much more easier again if you don't know what indexing is crawling is 
we'll look at this at another day. Now, if you have any questions about this, just let me know. I know it's a lot to take in, but I am going to add the link to this home uh, structure page so that you can take a look, you can deep dive and have a proper look at this. But this is how you should be setting up your projects everywhere, because as you can see, it, it's quick, it's efficient, it's easy. And if you need to make changes across your site, you're going to be able to do that so efficiently. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any uh, suggestions to improve this, but this is how I'm working. This is how I've worked with uh, a lot of companies. So thank you and goodbye.